So Deb, as, as the director of Stop It Now, I, I know that you have um, lots of opportunities to talk with the public. I wonder also, you know, do you ever get the question, um, you know, how did you get involved in this work, and um, what 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 did involve, what did inspire you to get, take a step and really, you know, commit yourself to prevention? Yeah, that is a very um, frequently asked question of me because people first. They're reacting from their own feelings of the yuck factor, as we refer to it sometimes, of like, oh, children being sexually abused, how can you, that must be really hard, but it's really wonderful. And, you know, so, there, so that question comes up, how, do you, how did you get involved, what do you, why are you doing this, and all that. And, you know, there, there are many reasons for it, but um, the, the one is that I was a therapist for years, and I would say 95% of the women that I worked with um, talked about their own abuse history. And that those were in hospital settings. Um, and it was a select population. But still, these women had struggled all their lives. And, and they were ages 20 to 80 something. And they, it might be the first time they've ever talked to anybody about their abuse. And that same thing happens on our helpline and has happened over the years. That people call us, they're calling on behalf of a child, but what happens is that they say, oh, and by the way, this is the first time I've ever told anybody. Mm -hmm. And it sort of chokes me up to think about that because hearing that voice on the other side of the line telling you this and knowing that they have somehow managed to pull up the strength to call on behalf of this child while at the same time, they're struggling with their own um, feelings of loss, betrayal, all the things that we hear from survivors and that I know personally from having had the experience of being sexually abused around the age of five um, by a, a woman in, in a childcare setting.